Okay. Thank you for coming our presentation. Uh, today, we'd like to talk about our private cloud strategy to uh, expand scale and uh, how deepen our uh, technologies of our private cloud. And so, uh, first, I introduced, introduced uh, ourselves shortly. Uh, our company, NTT Docomo, is the largest uh, mobile operators company in Japan. And so, uh, we manage OpenStack-based private cloud, uh, which is uh, used for in-house users. And so, we use all core components for our cloud, and so like Nova or Neutron or so on. And so, I'm Jun Ishii, mainly work as operator and so consultant for in-house users. Uh, I'll talk about our cloud strategy and some GPU know-hows. And the second speaker is uh, Hiromichi Ito, as the CTO of Virtual Tech Japan. Uh, he uh, works so long time in our project, over two years, and he will talk about the uh, layer two gateway technologies in our clouds. And the last, last speaker is uh, Kojo Aman. Uh, he has plenty knowledge of NTT Docomo's uh, security policies, and so his topic is about re reference model, which is uh, based on our company policies, and so uh, plan for automatic security update in our clouds. The first half team is focused on strategy. How do we expand our cloud, private cloud? So we launched our private cloud system just one year ago. And when we started the cloud, we only have one data center and about uh, 50, 100 cores compute node. It's a little bit too small to manage or maintain systems uh, at the point of TCO, total costs. As you know, running costs are affected by scale. So systems should be large to some extent for the costs. By some reasons, which we mention in later, uh, we succeed in scaling our cloud. So just now, uh, scale is, uh, of our system is about six times larger than last year. By launching new data center and set up more nodes to last data centers. So on, we are constructing two more data centers now and they will be launched in next March. And so cords will be over uh, 35,000, so it's so big. Then, sorry. then, now explain our strategy. To expand our crowds, we aim to accommodate a large forest fast. So large scale system, which uses so many cores, is like a forest. These forest size systems enable us to win approval for expanding our crowds. After obtaining authorization to create a large forest, we we'll enrich our private cloud function to accommodate various types of systems from tiny to medium scale systems. Uh, from next page, I try to break down this forest and tree method uh, to three important challenges and mention these details. So these are details. First point, we obtain to budget uh, we obtain the budget to create new data centers and scale up our system. In telecom company, uh, there are so many in-house systems like uh, operational system or business systems uh, are working. We succeed to invite some of these systems to migrate for our clouds. As you know, to create a large scale private cloud, uh, one of the most important problem is how to obtain the budget. Uh, to create them. So fortunately, our private cloud has decided to use new uh, system base. Uh, this is one of the example story. Uh, a system which working on on-premise environment uh, was, was so moved to our system. And uh, so cause it's time to end of hardware life cycle. We suggest them to use our clouds uh, because there are so many strengths. 
As a result, so CAPEX and OPEX can be much reduced by using our code systems and construct a new on-premise by their own. Moreover, these systems are designed for distributed architecture and familiar with OpenStack-based cloud system. Thus, they decide to use our cloud system and we can expand more compute node and make more data centers. So not only these systems, but also some in-house systems will be migrated to our cloud system. So our cloud system goes larger and larger. Next, uh, short delivery time to launch new data center can be a strong point for us. Quick deployment enables us to reduce capex and, uh, sorry, opex and increase possibility to satisfy urgent large scale requirements. So we always have some rules for operating cloud and one of the rules is so normalization and autom automation. So based on don't repeat yourself dry rule, almost all knowledge are automated by Ansible playbooks or uh, normalized by knowledge base wiki. So all information are written by Ansible or knowledge base. These know-how and how we store knowledge are mentioned in the last presentation in Tokyo. So if uh, you want to know details, please check it out in YouTube. Then, this normalization enables us to shorten period of deployment. So we can do configuration settings and network settings and so install OpenStack components and start quality assurance test in just 10 days by five people. Furthermore, these operators are not uh, experts of OpenStack. Uh, they are just beginners of OpenStack. Our knowledge enough so precise for beginners if uh, it can also be an advantage for expanding. Last details, so novel challenges are mainly focusing on expand our clouds with various systems. So after creating forests, fill in rooms or space or uh, by little, a uh, bit smaller system is needed for use each node fully. When invite small scale system to cloud, so many systems prefer to use uh, public cloud, big cloud uh, because so they have so many functions. Uh, to satisfy the uh, various users' will, uh, we paid attention to what functions are needed uh, to our company users. Actually, layer get to is uh, layer two gateway is useful, and large scale system also needed to use. This is so key techni technology for connection between two regions data centers. We decided to add this function to our cloud for the first step of expanding. GPU is also important systems for machine learning usage. So some of our users are research and development section members. They eager to use GPU nodes to analyze uh, various kinds of big data. We judge the GPU is enough mature, matured on work on OpenStack and can deploy by ourselves untried. Last two challenges are focused on our in-house rules or policies. When constructing systems, uh, there are too many guidelines to apply for. Reference model reduced these costs to apply in-house policy. Security update is just testing report However, it will enable us and our system users to reduce maintenance costs for security management. Okay, then let's see the each technical overviews and know-hows in last half. Um, and first entry is uh, so enable us to cloud so far. Ah, just a cheap joke. So. Then we talk about how deep in our private cloud, so technical issues. So first of all, uh, Hiromichi talks about the layer two gateway techniques in our clouds. So Hiromichi, please talk about it. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, our layer two gateway system, how 
connecting existing large-scale networks and inter-cloud networking. First of all, let me talk about our user. Our user has a large-scale existing network and proprietary computer systems. This network system has a great ability that provides layer 2 connectivity to nationwide. However, this proprietary computer system side does not have enough flexibility. User need REST API and service mobility. So they decided to migrate to OpenStack on this renewal timing. But they request that network system side migration must be minimal. And our user requested new two network services. The first request is that connect the tenant network between the two data centers. The second request is that the instance can communicate with existing equipment. This slide shows the overview of user systems before renewal. The network run trip time is about 20 to 40 milliseconds between the two data centers. There is a large-scale wide area network, and the dedicated equipment is connected. This slide shows the overview of user's system after renewal. We deployed the OpenStack on both data centers, and we add the new link for OpenStack to wide area network. I will explain later in detail. Our user's requirement summary has three items. The first request is about high availability. Our users requested that do not share control service between data center because they would like to prevent a cascading failure. So we choose region zoning model. In region model, all service is separated correctly. And our users requested that avoided single point of failure. Uh, fortunately, our base OpenStack deployment model avoids single point of failure already. The second request is about technical limitations. Our user requested that do not change IP addressing and routing architecture. We can deploy that on the overlay network. Next, our user requests that do not use network address translation. Network address translation is must technique for floating IP and connecting the external network. But this system does not request the floating IP address function. We do not anything for that. Last, our user requires it about technical administrations that connects instance and existing equipment by layer 2. This limitation came from existing system technical limitations. Our base OpenStack deploy model is using layer 3 equal cost march pass fabric and VXRAM. So we choose VXRAM layer 2 gateway. The third request is about performance. Our user requested the performance target about total throughput and average packet size. In terms of cost performance, that target does not match the software-based solution. So we choose using hardware-based VXRAN L2 gateway. Up to here, we have spoken about user and requirements. Now let me move on to the topic of hardware layer 2 gateway. We carried out the equipment selection about hardware-based layer 2 gateway. It's a very long <laughs> name. We here and after call hardware layer 2 gateway. Modern layer 3 switch chipset has hardware VTEP gateway functions. In the example, Intel and Broadcom have that functions. 
So we tried to examine both Intel FM6000 and Broadcom Trident 2 best L3 network switch. Finally, we compared three vendors' layer 3 switches. As a result, we choose vendor A's L3 switch because they support VXRAN within a multi chassis RAM deployment. Uh, we choose neutral networking L2 gateway for managing hardware layer 2 gateway. So we carried out the proof of concept with using the combination of networking layer 2 gateway and hardware layer 2 gateway. As a result, we met several minor bugs, and we noticed the missing of future that are required for the production environment. And we created a patch that adds machine future that are uh, SSL support and multicast handling. And then we passed proof of concept. This slide shows the logical view of proof of concept. The L2 gateway agent controls the hardware layer 2 gateway by OVSDB protocols. Uh, we pro passed proof of concept. Next, we carried out the pilot test with at the scale as the production environment. As a result, we encountered several critical bugs. We have not encountered these bugs when carried out the proof of concept. In the hardware layer 2 gateway side, when inserting a large number of records at one time, OSDB server has crashed. Fortunately, this issue already fixed by the vendor. In the networking L2 gateway side, we have encountered several critical bugs that are hard to reproduce. When hit these bugs, L2 gateway agent stopped. And the L2 gateway agent recovery from a crash state is very tough. L2 gateway agent always sync state between neutron database and OVSDB. Unfortunately, when L2 gateway agent crashed or stalled, these two databases sometimes lost sync. So we have to re-register L2 gateway connections settings manually when met these bugs. L2 gateway agent trouble occurred without missing a week. The L2 gateway agent does not work correctly after a few days when users run wrong test. The instance could not communicate another region instance and existing equipment in many times. Our user said, we don't want to use this unstable system for layer 2 gateway. So we decide to not use networking L2 gateway in production environment for, time, for the time being because we could not reproduce bug, uh, sorry, we could not reproduce connection troubles between OVSDB and L2 gateway agent that occurred weekly. I we could not fix all critical bugs that we encountered. And we met scalability issue of red area to population that is needed for networking L2 gateway working. The L2 population does not have enough scalability for over several hundred nodes yet. And we must keep a delivery dead because user side project depends on layer 2 gateway in the test stage. And our project leader said, we must keep delivery dead because delay means our project death. For that reason, we created manual procedure to manage layer 2 gateway at first. We do the manual operation to hardware layer 2 gateway and open VCH flow tables when user request creates or delete an instance. 
And we created an automation system based on a manual procedure, finally. This system is working correctly now. Uh, let me summarize the proof of uh, point of our L2 gateway project. We provide stable L2 gateway, which is connecting the two regions, instance, and existing equipment. We passed all test criteria provided from the client. Our users get excellent service flexibility by the OpenStack. By using the LIA2 gateway, the existing network configuration was kept that our user requested. Finally, we would like to talk about the next challenge of our LIA2 gateway project. The first challenge is that we fix known issue of networking L2 gateway because we would like to provide layer 2 gateway service by standard API. The second challenge is that we improved l population scalability. And the third challenge is that we investigated uh, Ethernet VPN for providing layer 2 gateway service more widely. That's all for my section. Thank you. Thank you, Hiromichi, for uh, L2 gateway talks. And so next is a GPU instance. How uh, do we deal with them? Uh, however, uh, there's so no time. Uh, we, I need to leave uh, time for Kojiro, so I speak shortly. And uh, GPU nodes have some difficulty to deal with. Uh, and there are some limitations work on private cloud. Uh, need to know pros and cons before you introduce GPU nodes to your private cloud. So now I'd like to share some know-how and so pros and cons shortly. And we choose GPU nodes shown in here. So this, is, this server includes uh, M40, uh, NVIDIA M40 cards, and four cards are in, uh, inside of the servers. Deploy is uh, quite easy. So need to enable two functions, so PCI pass-through and IOMMU functions. And so how to enable PCI pass-through is written in OpenStack Wiki, just see it. And so IOMMU is also simple, just write down a grab file and reboot the server. And operate is a, a little bit difficult for me. Uh, as a result of our verification, so IOMMU allocates all memory when the instance launch. Uh, if you set flavor size, uh, it large enough and launch maximum number of instance. Uh, sometimes OOM killer uh, try to kill the, these process, and so instance automatically shut down. So swapping doesn't work well because so these IOMMU allocate these areas so fastly, and memory ballooning doesn't work. So uh, we need to set some workarounds to these problems. So. Take enough margin for the host OS is uh, uh, good for us. And one is a reduced flavor memory size. However, so memory size uh, affect to the GPU users. Sometimes it's too uncomfortable for users. And another uh, workaround is a uh, so set reserved host memory megabyte in Nova file uh, set to enough large size. Uh, it also affect other flavors. And so it causes decreased maximum number of instances on per host. So these are just workarounds. So if you have any other solutions, please tell uh, after these sections. And so how should we offer GPU flavor to the private cloud users? So there are some pros and cons. Uh, just uh, writing down, and so I have no time to <laughs> explain, so just see it. And the conclude is, so cooperate with GPU users. So private cloud, uh, we can communicate with the user, uh, private, uh, cause it's a private cloud. And cooperate with GPU instance user is so important for private cloud providers. So it's my conclusion. And so last uh, two topic is, uh, uh, spoken by Kozio, and um, Defense Model and Security Update. So thanks for my introductions, and I'm Kozio Amanos, and I would like to explain Defense Models first. 
So in order to, oh, sorry, <laughs> in order to migrate some of in-house app to our clouds, we have the strict security policies, which means uh, over 100 security guidelines for security governance. So and then a lot of effort uh, by you, effort by users are required to meet the policies when users reconstruct app on our clouds. Uh, here is a, a part of the sec our security policies. Uh, for example, redundancies, uh, log, file, like, like that. And uh, in order to reduce users' tasks, we, pre pre we proposed predefined models. And predefined model is called uh, reference models on our clouds. Reference model is, is a system architecture based on many of security policies. And then a reference model deploys some of servers, sets of open source software stacks that have been heavily tested on a project. So uh, let me show you a demo of how to play reference models at first. So uh, this is demos, and the first users can uh, download heat templates. And, uh, uh, Users can confirm to share the image which we prepared. And this, is, this image can be used in orchestration service. And there's some of server image uh, after, the, after that we used. <coughs> and uh, uh, this is orchestration service. And the input them heat template files input them. And this is heat template. And next. And uh, some setting like the, like the security group or uh, those cyber image or uh, passwords or uh, key pairs and like that and launch. And after the three minutes, uh, here we go. Uh, orchestration service can be complete. And uh, you can see the network topologies. Uh, this is the reference models uh, network topology. But uh, it is uh, a little bit complicated. So back to the presentations, and I would like to explain in details in system architectures. <clears throat> so uh, this is a system architecture. This, can, this is based on web three tier models. And uh, which means the three network segments, and uh, in each segment, uh, there are unique servers. And uh, this, is, this is covered with security policies, some of security policies, such as uh, network segments and uh, enforcing security group, like that. And uh, now I will explain the uh, web uh, load balancer servers and VPN servers, I will explain, for example. So first, web and load balancer servers. And open source software, Apache, is installed by default for web servers. Or LBS, that is software load balancers, uh, is installed for load balancer LB servers. And uh, some of security, uh, security policies is set, uh, such as uh, dummy certificate for HTTPS or rough basic rules for IDS. And in this time, the key point is, not, is to not only install open source software, but also complete uh, those default settings about security, uh, like HTTPS, like that. And then, uh, by the way, we did not use LB as a service, load balancer as a service, which called Airbus. We did not use. This is because Airbus uh, version V1 in Junos does not satisfy with use case of our users. Our users require to, uh, for example, set the security group to load balancers, or terminate SSL at load balancer, or provide story page like that. So that's why we do not use Airbus. And next, uh, VPN servers. For secure remote access, uh, we uh, open open source software, open VPN is installed and makes uh, makes SSL VPNs. And the default setting can be done, and uh, and then we prepare tools for operation of SSL VPN, such as create and revoke certificate. 
and these enable, enable users to reduce user's tasks. And same as Elbrus, we do not use VPN as a service, and VPN us. This is because the algorithm for authentication in IK phase one accepted on the SSH ones, uh, which will be encryption losing safety assurance. So uh, we do not use. But by the way, the indecent version Newton's VPN as a service accept, accepted SHA 256, so no problem about that. So uh, this is a uh, summary. Lastly, uh, as we showed uh, defense models, uh, defense model is covered with sec some of security policies currently. And the current covered area is 60% in these pictures, pink areas, covered areas. So and uh, uh, our future is we will update these models by adding the missing parts in these gray parts about security policies. And they must cover 100% and they must reduce users' tasks and more and more. So rehearse model is end and next is security updates. So at first, we will explain about current daily operations, manually. And uh, most of the operation, our operation is manual, check vulnerabilities or risk assessment of vulnerabilities and management to-do list, update our crowds. And uh, those these manual operation can cause human errors, forget to check vulnerabilities. And uh, uh, time is a little bit long times, one hour a day. And moreover, as our crowd expands, it will become important operations of securities. So uh, that's why it's, uh, we we run this. This operation can be automated in order to in order to reduce human errors. So and uh, in order to consider the automatic process, so uh, we will explain the in details current operations. So first check vulnerabilities and we check vendor site manually uh, one by one and, also, and then risk assessment. This is semi-automatic process by the script, our script. And uh, after, the after the risk assessment, management to do list we manage by Excel. And uh, after the update, uh, up, after the management, we update a semi-automatic process by Ansible's. And uh, from uh, those processes, uh, human errors can be happened. So uh, uh, we, are we, are, uh, we are testing our proposed ways. We propose how to be automatic. So uh, now we are, uh, we are conducting our proof of our, our concept. So uh, now let me show a demo uh, while we are testing in automatic process and each process. So first check vulnerabilities automatic process. This is uh, our, our proposed way is based on CVE and CVSS. And CVE is uh, attached IDs and CVSS is squirt vulnerabilities. And uh, instead of vendor site for check automatically, API CVE search is used. And let me show uh, short demos and automatically process. So uh, this is uh, our tools, uh, our testing tools. And uh, the list of vulnerabilities will be shown here in these screens. And uh, now a CV search API is executed uh, background. Oh. Uh, so the list is shown. For example, CV is left and CVSS scores are shown and also summaries or last update like that. <clears throat> so uh, by using APIs, it uh, can, can be enabled us to automatic process checking vendor sites. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, so next, risk assessment. 
And the key point is CVSS, uh, the risk assessment by CVSS is not always much with our environments. If the version of, back, version of vulnerability is, is not related, the risk will be announced or the host in internal network will be, uh, will be targeted, the risk will be low, so like that. So that's why we need to re-evaluate the CVSS scores for each host regarding its environment. So uh, automatic re-evaluate process, we, let me show demos. <coughs> So uh, confirm to automatically evaluate the CVSS process. And uh, first choose the host. And the package, uh, package list in host are uh, shown. Here is that. And the rest is package name and agency and install version like that. And the uh, CVSS in here, CVSS is automatically re evaluated and from some point of view, and shown as urgent sheets. And this is okay, is a no vulnerability like that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so sad management to do list. Uh, for, of course, do not forget vulnerabilities which have high risk until the patch uh, is applied. And also, moreover, important thing is, even if the CVSS score is low, it will sometimes become high score in our environment. So uh, we need to check the same vulnerabilities continuously. And automatic process demos, quick shots. So this is management to-do list about vulnerabilities and demos. And same as uh, before, previous, choose the choose urgency and the list of vulnerabilities is shown. And the host package versions and related CVEs is related, uh, is shown. And, uh, uh, sorry, cuts. And uh, the result of CV search, API CV search, is reflect once a day and automatically uh, reflect in this here related CVEs. <clears throat> so last, last update our crowd. Uh, this is only semi-automatic procedures uh, because we must care about the influence of user's instance and it is necessary to have manual interventions for checkpoints. And the check, uh, so that's why we, we, need, we decided semi-automatic procedures. In this part is update cloud procedures uh, after the check, please. And futures, for the future we will apply our propose this ways in the test environment at first. And also we will extend our tools for user safe checks so future works, I think. So uh, this is the end. Thank you for listening. So uh, if you have any questions, please. So nothing. <laughs> so okay, uh, this is the end. Thank you for uh, attentions.